Well, in a couple years, I might get my money back. Hey, sometimes investments are made over the long run. You kids these days want all this instant satisfaction. Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will crawl on your face in your sleep. The worst thing about scams? You'll never know when you're going to be fooled by it. Rick and the whole team are very cautious with all the deals they make, and as much as possible they always involve an expert to make sure things are clean for them. But whenever our pawn stars let their guard down, the biggest scams in the show are made. They're so screened it wouldn't even have been a decal, and it's not even a G that Gibson ever used. You've got your decal in there like a Gibson, but it's... Welcome back to the Filmy, where we talk about the greatest events that happened on television. Book signed by Shoeless Joe Jackson. Rick claimed Joe Jackson's signature as the rarest sports signature. So how much did you want to get out of it? I'd like to get like 30,000 for the book. I'll go $13,000, I won't we'll go a penny more. Okay, Let, let's do it. Hmm. Say it ain't so. This is huge for the shop, and that's why the negotiation went a bit tricky since the guy that brought it wants 30 grand and Rick could only do $13,000 tops. They agreed. But the worst part is, the signature is fake. This is the biggest scam in the entire show. Rick even tried to get the signature authenticated once more, but the results only proved that the sign is indeed as fake as it gets. All case E in Joe's first name has been erased and signed over the original. <laughs> Great job, son. Marilyn Monroe handwritten poem. This guy came into the pawn shop with something that would be so valuable for all collectors. A photo of Marilyn with her autograph on it and a poem that she wrote herself. Marilyn Monroe signed picture and a handwritten poem. I have four experts looked at it about 10 years ago. Fans would go ballistic just to get their hands on an item like that. Appraised at $48,000, both parties are looking at huge numbers. The expert came in to check the authenticity of the signature and the handwriting on the poem. All spirits went down when it turned out that the item is a counterfeit. Like, yeah. This was unfortunately penned in someone else's hand and not Marilyn Monroe's. Well, I wish it were real, man. I mean, we'd both make a lot of money, but absolutely. Comic book collection. Chum Lee is known for messing up lots of deals in the shop, and that's the reason why Rick is having a hard time trusting him on making deals by himself. I'd like to get two thousand dollars. I'll give you fifty bucks a box. That's three fifty. Can you do five hundred? I'm gonna do the five hundred. This is one of those moments. A lady went into the shop to sell her uncle's comic book collection. There were multiple boxes of comics. Chumley went blind with the deal and offered five hundred bucks for it. Then, when he went out to get the collection checked, it turns out that there are no valuable comics in the collection whatsoever. Chumley once again got scammed. Uh, about five cents a book, if you're lucky. Well, in a couple years, I might get my money back. Hey, sometimes investments are made over the long run. You kids these days won't. Silent Scope 2 game. Chumley loves video games. He went to check on BJ's place to check on his Silent Scope 2 arcade game. The game is in very good condition and is very fun to play with. Chumley agreed for a deal of 700 bucks for the whole thing, but then, later at the shop they discovered, as per Corey's assessment, that the damn thing's best price is 700 bucks only. No profit for them. Now, old man just took the opportunity to teach Chumley to use Skype. You could have dropped a damn dime. They really don't have payphones anymore, Dad. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was trying to figure out what that even meant. <laughs> I mean, you could have showed us the thing, I could have told you. Jimi Hendrix Poetry This guy came into the gold and silver pawn shop with hopes to sell a poem from the guy that Rolling Stone magazine labeled as the greatest guitarist of all time, a.k.a. Jimi Hendrix. I have some poetry here, written by Jimi Hendrix with them, and so they gave me this poetry. I'll tell you what, I'll have someone check it out. Sounds good. This is what we got. Rick, of course, who is running a business, can never just take a word to prove the authenticity of the item, so he had to call his guy. He checked the handwriting and also the pen that was used, and all of the details just don't match any details of the original. 
Well, it turns out the item is 100% unauthentic. Larger, much more flamboyant. The last name seems to be, you know, printed type style. He would always write in cursive. Seen a lot of different problems with it, and I can guarantee you that this is 100% not. The Titanic newspaper article. You see, the Boston Globe released an article about the Titanic the morning after it sank, and this man just walked into the pawn shop with the actual newspaper that contains what he claims to be the original article. This is a newspaper from the Boston Globe the morning after uh, the Titanic. Perfect condition. I mean, perfect. I mean, there's no yellowing in the, in the inside papers, which is amazing considering this. And believe it or not, it's from 1912. Rick examined this supposedly 100-year-old paper, and without a doubt, he blurted out, it's fake. Better luck next time, sir. For now, just watch the movie and cry your heart out. I copied it. Probably right after the movie came out. <laughs> oh, the resale? <laughs> yeah. Uh, after he opened it up, I really thought, yeah, it, it, it was fake, and I probably won't get a second opinion. The Beatles memorabilia. Erica went in with the Beatles memorabilia with the signature of all the members. Rick had to authenticate the signatures through his expert. August 18, 1966. Okay, where's, where's Paul's signature? Right there. Oh, on the guitar. All right, where did you get it? At the Playboy Mansion. So what were you doing? Rick knows that this piece will amount to a huge sum of cash, if legit. But it turns out everything is a scam. Well, lady, just like Rick said, at least you can still hang it on your wall and tell your friends it's legit. No idea where they came up with that style of signature. Unfortunately, when I see this piece, I see kind of a piece of manufactured memorabilia. Okay, well... Youth Indian Vest This guy came in hoping to sell this Youth Indian Vest that he claims to be created in the 1890s. A Sioux Youth Vest. Okay. I believe it was made... You want to pawn it? You want to sell it? Donate it to me? <laughs> I was looking to sell it. And how much were you looking for? Um, I was looking... Rick is fascinated with the item, and they agreed to do a deal for 1300 bucks. Corey already knew something seemed off, and in the end, he was correct. When authenticated, it turned out the item is not legit, as they assumed it to be. Corey just seized the opportunity to mess with his dad. Who would have thought the Indian vest would have turned out to be real? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll let him know right now. Here, it's Mark Hall Patton. That Indian vest you bought is actually real. Really? Hey, Mark, what's up? No. Claude Monet's painting. An authentic Claude Monet painting, on average, will cost you around $7 million. This man carried their family heirloom on the gold and silver pawn shop with pride, and this is a breathtaking Claude Monet painting. Exhibit at the Las Vegas Art Museum? It was, in All 1997. Right. Okay. They say early period, mm -hmm. which is very vague. I mean, he lived a very long life. Yeah. He started painting. Without shame, this guy expects to walk home with a million bucks in his pocket. Sadly, though, it's a scam since the painting is the furthest thing from being legit. Here you don't see that. So is it real? It's in the style of Monet, but it's not absolutely not by the end of uh, Claude Monet. And not probably, real. Not real. Ugh. The Gibson Mandolin. The Pawn Stars rarely get anything wrong. We don't expect anything less than a perfect verdict when it comes to authenticating items that go through the walls of their pawn shop every day. Not if I could. Would you be willing to go uh, any less? Fifteen hundred, and we got a deal. Fifteen sounds fair. I can make a 15? profit. Fifteen? All right, that sounds good. I appreciate it. <laughs> but this man with a Gibson mandolin walked out of the pawn shop with fifteen hundred dollars, enough to put a smile on his face. While Chumley, on the other hand, slowly realized that the Gibson mandolin that he just paid for is a complete scam. Or silk screen. It wouldn't even have been a decal. And it's not even a G that Gibson ever used. You got your decal in there like a Gibson, but it's not the right decal. And the fin This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching. Make sure to comment, hit the like and subscribe buttons, hit that notification bell for more videos like this, and share this video with your family and your friends. We'll see you soon.